Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism and real solar system now. As you can see from the background uh, planet, we do have Earth there, but I basically deleted the Spectra visual compilation and replaced it with real solar system plus RSS visual enhancements. So that's all I've done. I have not added any other mods or replaced any other mods but I might need to. <laughs> We're going to find that out soon. I, I didn't even replace the skybox yet. Uh, that's not my usual skybox when I'm using real solar system. So uh, there aren't any pot part mods or anything like that replaced. Restock is still in. So let's see. Resume saved. And that is our current save. And we will see what happens. Okay, well, Contract Configurator's having a fuss, obviously. Well, that sort of makes sense, right? I mean, why would the contract data be loaded? Avoid saving your game and backup save file to prevent contract loss. I note that our reputation is in the crapper. Uh, that's probably because all those contracts uh, were read as failed. Um, I thought we had wrapped up all the contracts, so I don't actually know what's going on there. Uh, so I'll have to reset that. We now have an Explore Mars contract. Rescue a Kerbal from orbit of Earth. That's good. Um, test a small hard point. I don't know. We, uh, contract configurer is going to need to have a, uh, have a replacement. Uh, but uh, we'll see. We'll work with that as we go along. Let's take a look at the tracking station and see where our vessels have been placed. I will manually adjust the reputation to something moderate. Uh, probably we're not getting as many contracts as we should because our reputation is horrible. Um, Mooner Landing 1. Well, okay, so they're actually really, really close to the sun is what's happened. Um, Sentinel 1 is very close to the sun. The stuff that was in uh, solar orbit is very close to the sun. This, uh, Jewel, or even the stuff that I think should have been... Oh, well, this is orbiting series. This uh, Jewel Orbital Sciencer's orbiting series now. That's interesting. Uh, Jewel Relay. Well, that maneuver is useless. But it's basically between Ceres and Mars. Ceres has an inclination, that's right. Uh, Jewel System Lander. Now that's weird because this Jewel Orbital Sciencer is orbiting Ceres, but this Jewel System Lander is landed on Mars. And then Romor's craft is landed on Europa. So, I mean, we'll try not to take advantage of the situation too much. Um, we'll see. I mean, they, they are where they are, and it's not that big a deal. I wonder if, like, the scanning, like the X scanner, has scanned Mars. Let's find out. Let's let's go to the X scanner. Let's see if it can scan Mars. But it's not in a polar orbit, is it? It's in a very high orbit, but it's not polar. Rather than doing something right now, I'm going to try and fix up our reputation and reload and see if contract configurator still has an issue or whether that was just because of existing contracts and it'll be reset as it is. And um, yeah, well, first of all, let me see if Mars is looking proper, right? Because I've got RSS visual enhancements now and I want to see whether that's working right. There is one of Mars's moons. Okay, we've got power. I don't know. Mars doesn't seem to be looking right, does it? Why is it so dark? Okay, well, I think we have a basic scope of the situation. Let me see what I can do. Okay, so here we go again. I still don't see any clouds on Earth. That's interesting. So maybe RSS visual enhancements isn't working yet. Um, I restored our reputation and science and funds to what they were supposed to be. Basically, the persistent file has a checksum, and I think that's uh, stored in the load meta. And so, obviously, the numbers were not going to be quite right because 
well, we've got totally different planets, so the checksum wasn't working out, so it adjusted some numbers to make the checksum work out, and that's why our numbers were messed up. Um, well, I, I am aware that things are much more yellow in RSS visual enhancements um, now in 1.6. I don't know why exactly, but this is, this is how it is. So uh, get used to the yellow tint, because that's how it is now. And we have clouds, but I don't know if that's how they're supposed to look. Maybe. Let's quickly take a look at Mars. Well, let's just go there. Well, now Mars is looking right. So basically what I did was I copied the folders from a test real solar system install. That's for realism overall stuff, but it's in 1.6.1. And so I had everything there. So I instead of having the versions of uh, Copernicus and Scatterer that I had with Kerbalism, I decided to copy those instead, just in case uh, they were slightly the wrong version that is compatible with real solar system in 1.6. So it looks like, or uh, not real solar system, real solar system was working fine, uh, compatible with RSS visual enhancements in 1.6. So now it seems to be looking right. The location of various vessels has probably not changed. But let's take a look at our contracts. Well, now we have a whole lot more contracts. Uh, no active ones. Gather scientific data from Earth. Well, that's not going to pay for very much. Rescue Domon, who orbit of the sun. That's probably a bad thing. Yeah, that's over ambitious. Explore Mars, though. We can't just... Okay, so return to or Earth from orbit of Mars. That's difficult. That's difficult. Could we do that within that budget? Basically, we're talking about in total... I don't know. I guess this is separate from this, even though these two numbers sum up to that number. So maybe it's not. Maybe this is not separate from these, because... If you add these two up, that equals that. So I don't know how to read that, whether uh, I should assume that we're going to get 143,000 by the end of this or 286,000. Not sure. But could we... Well, when's the next Mars window? Um, Kerbal alarm clock still works, by the way. And so we want to go from Earth to Mars in a year. So we're going to have to wait a while. Hmm. Transfer window planner would be good. But in theory, let me just try and work up a rocket that could send a vessel to Mars and return to Earth. That's interesting. We'll see. I mean, ironically, the problem we're facing isn't that things are too small. The problem we're facing is that things are too big. And um, you can sort of see that with, like the minified monopropellant tanks here. The fact that this return probe, which is supposed to, you know, come back down and parachute down to Earth's surface after returning from Mars, is a whole 450 kilograms. And that's really heavy. And uh, we also don't really have heat shields in the right diameter, right? Because uh, the only one smaller than that one is this one. And I don't have any faith that that actually protects all this, right? That doesn't look like it protects it properly. So, yeah. And there's a bit of a problem. The parachute's too heavy. I mean, the parachute alone is 100 kilograms. I mean, 100 kilograms to carry, you know, 450 kilograms down is too much. So, we don't really have smaller parachutes either. But I'll, I'll see what I can do, but it's really heavy. I mean, it's just a fact. Oh, geez, I just realized this Octo-2 doesn't have a reaction wheel. It used to. It used to have a reaction wheel built in. But that means I'm going to have to switch to uh, the regular old Octo or to the Hex. Let me see. There's the Hex. Reaction wheel is very important in this particular case. Okay, they're the same mass. I think in 1.7 the hex is actually heavier. But anyway, it's physically bigger, which is going to annoy me as far as uh, putting this together. 
Uh, as you can see, we're trying to recover two goo. I put the other experiments here since Kerbalism stores the experimental data inside the core anyway. One nice thing about stock is that the solar panels are really efficient. I mean, this is 0.3 per second and, you know, our core is only requiring 1.2 per minute. So that's really good. That's probably the only good thing. Otherwise, I'm trying... Uh, so basically, we're going to use this heat shield for capturing around Mars. And then these engines are going to transfer us back to Earth. And then... Uh, this is all hypothetical. We'll, we'll test it around the moon, really. Um, just uh, because the moon is closer and I don't want to wait a year. Uh, but then this heat shield would actually handle the re-entry at Earth. So that's the plan. And it's a nice little neat little capsule, so that's good. And the return fuel, 2,453. But we're talking about we'll need a rocket that can launch three tons over to Mars. And I haven't even put the antenna on yet. That's a separate problem. Um, as far as I know, the antennae are not additive. And so it's either this one or this one for... There's a 274 million kilometer range, which is still a little bit low for Mars, but if Earth and Mars are sort of in the right place, that's good. The problem is um, they're big, and obviously we can't capture with stuff like this going on. So, I mean, if we extend the antenna, oh. I mean, maybe if they're extended, but will they break in the... I mean, does it say anything about them being breakable? It doesn't say. So if I re-enter with it open, will it break? That is the question. If no, then this will be all right. Um, it cuts down our Delta V though, so I'll probably have to add some other tank to it to make sure that we can get back home. Um, we would have to retract the antennae before separating off this bit, but that's all right. So, like, well, I mean, even if it's clipping a little bit, that's fine. We'll retract it before separating, but let's say if it's like this, <laughs> will, would this be all right? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't used these, uh, this, uh, antenna look before. Hmm. Well, we'll have to find out, I think. Okay, let me continue building. Okay, so here's what I've cooked up for a Mars sample return probe, at least a sample return from the space around Mars, not from Mars' surface, of course. And, well, it's pretty expensive, 307,000 funds, so the contract really wouldn't be worth it at uh, this stage. But taking a look, I already showed you the little return part, and uh, this is the return stage with the spark engines to uh, bring it back. That's the 3, uh, 2,300 meters per second. Normally I budget 2,400 for getting back from Mars. So that's a little bit tight. And of course a heat shield. And then the next two stages are our transfer to Mars. It's capturing around Mars using this heat shield. So we don't need to add another stage for that. And our budget, so there's this stage here. And this stage here, those are, are our transfer stages to Mars. Uh, this one is a Terrier, this one is a Cheetah. And uh, together they have 3,869. Normally I budget 4,000, so there's a little bit on the light side. It's possible to get a transfer to Mars for as little as 3,600, maybe even less. 3,600 is on the low end. So potentially, potentially that is our transfer to Mars right there. And then uh, we have a wolfhound stage. My first use of a wolfhound, I don't think I can avoid it here. And uh, they've sort of adjusted the stats so that it's a little bit more reasonable. 380 vacuum. I remember it being 410, and that was out of bounds. Um, it certainly isn't anything like the engine that it's supposed to represent, which is the AJ-10-137, the service propulsion engine. But uh, it's... It's got uh, something like four times the thrust of that engine in real life. Also, many, many, many times the mass. It's at 3.3 tons, so 
It's sort of balanced because of the mass, but that's a heavy engine for no particular reason. But, um, yep, anyway, we've got it there. It turned out that it was the best uh, engine for this stage. And then we have a stage of four skiffs, and then we have a stage of uh, two um, Rhino engines on the core and six mainsail boosters. So basically to get to orbit around the Earth we are using four stages and then two stages to transfer to Mars and one to return from Mars. Uh, let me just quickly sum up the total delta V of the four stages. When I say four stages, three core stages and one booster stage. The core is lit while the boosters are running and basically it's acting like uh, SRB at that point the core I mean so these four stages combined give us 9495 meters per second which is close enough to 9500 I normally budget for orbit and we really need the 9500 because our sea level thrust weight ratio is fairly low now the Rhino engines as you know are not very good at sea level however they're better than any SRB anyway, so we might as well light them on the ground to get that extra thrust. Uh, so we take a look at the Rhino 205 at sea level, going up to 340. Uh, the kickbacks don't have much thrust, uh, and they start at 195. And if we're going to carry the Rhinos anyway to continue burning after the, uh, the boosters drop off, we might as well just run them uh, to get the extra thrust. So that's how it's configured and it should have just enough delta V to get to orbit and then transfer to Mars and then get back from Mars if everything went perfectly but there are no backups basically if um, if anything gets busted because of Kerbalism it's dead so we're certainly not gonna be trying this as our first launch after upgrading uh, to real solar system uh, for no other reason than we aren't at the Mars window anyway. We are going to do something smaller. I want to do a test probe to the moon, which will be expensive, but not this expensive. So I've already configured that, and let's see. So we have a much trimmer rocket for a moon orbit and return mission, and that's what this is. It's modified. We no longer have a separate return heat shield. Uh, now it's all on one heat shield. And otherwise it's the same sort of thing except I removed the spark engines and put ants because they are more efficient at this mass and I also removed the big antennae and put commutron 16s instead because commutron 16s are good enough uh, assuming even the level 2 DSN 707,000 kilometers per commutron 16 while the moon is only 300,000 kilometers out so yeah and it says combinable, so there's that too. Okay, other than that, we removed one stage for the transfer. The transfer to Mars had two stages. We only have one stage with the Cheetah engine. And uh, this isn't actually just, uh, this is actually completing orbit and starting the transfer. The transfer we finished with the Ant engines. And they, there are four of those, and they burn for 8 minutes and 22 seconds. And then. We have still the Wolfhound stage as before, but at the bottom here, uh, instead of the Rhino engines, we have three of the mainsails. So, and and this is obviously only possible because of restock. Otherwise, I, I don't know. I I don't think. Yeah, I mean, this model was definitely not the stock model. So, uh, yep, and a very good looking model too. I think. Yep, definitely a good model there. So that's providing 4,000, really low thrust weight ratio off the launch pad as before, but it'll be enough. And uh, the this third stage um, will get us into orbit with about 500 to 800 meters per second left, maybe 1,000 if we get the trajectory just right. But it is a long trip to orbit. You can see here uh, a little bit over, well, about 11 minutes. So very Saturn V-ish on that, but fairly light, 364 tons to get a moon probe out. Well, I mean, fairly light for stock stuff. Uh, moon probes can be done for less, but we'll see. 117,000 is about the right price for a test of this sort. So let's go. Okay, so here we are, and 
taking a look at the clock there, it looks like we are on 24-hour clock and presumably 365-day calendar. And that'll be important. Don't need surface info yet. Then really action group the science. We'll do those point by point. Moon seems to be at its inclination and we are we are in fact at Cape Canaveral. Yes. So that is nominal. And presumably Kerbalism is operating off of its real solar system configuration now. I'm not sure. Well, I mean, it knows there's Earth, Sun, Europa, and all that business, so... I trust that is correct. We're currently lining up with the moon so that we can minimize inclination. Remember, we're at 28 degrees latitude at Cape Canaveral, but it so happens that if you combine the tilt of the Earth, which is 23 degrees, plus the moon's own tilt, which is 5 degrees, lines up nicely with the 28 degrees at Cape Canaveral. So you can see that our relative inclination is getting close to zero. It won't quite hit it. The minimum you can do is 0.25. So we will slow down there, get smart ASS up, and throttle up, SAS on. I don't need the alarm clock. And ignition, well, and launch. <laughs> we don't have to wait for ignition here. Huh. Why no flame? That's weird. I mean, I've still got... I'll double check, but I've still got real plume stock, I'm sure. Yep. Stock real plumes are in. Smoke screen is still here. So this is peculiar. We got the sound. Oh, the flames are all the way down here. Huh. That's strange. Hmm. I mean, nothing should be rescaled. I mean, the world is, but the flames shouldn't be. Well, I don't know what to think about that. I put the fins on just in case because um, going through... I don't have fair mirror space right now, so the atmosphere is unpredictable to me. Going through Mach and Max Q, it's a lot thicker than it is with fair mirror space and real solar system. And that's another thing. I wanted to test the heat shield because I don't have real heat in here. So I want to see if the heat shields can take re-entry at the velocities that we get, which is like about 10, 11,000 meters per second. Not something that you normally see in stock. So far, a very nominal flight. Good looking rocket, if I do say so myself. A little bit unconventional with the three core engines, but that's what we needed. Uh, we don't really need the fairings to go first. Let's have that staging. There is auto strutting going on because but I don't I don't have Kerbal Joint reinforcement of course. So auto strutting would be necessary. So the atmosphere ends in realism overhaul at 140 kilometers. Not realism overhaul, real solar system. Real solar system at 140 kilometers. I should have put parachutes on that and let stage recovery try and bring it back. I don't know. Hopefully it could. Okay, let's try fairing separation. Ooh, close. Now it's all bluish. First it's yellowish on the ground and now it's washed out blue up here. So things, things definitely need to be fixed. Look at this. It's so blue. Maybe it's a transition zone thing. Maybe once we get out of the atmosphere, it'll switch color. Yep. I called that one. There's always something weird between about 100 and 140 kilometers. Well, now that we're in space, I should get the commutrons out at least. Before I forget. 
I wonder what kind of science we have and have not done. I mean, we haven't done Earth science yet. All I've got is a thermometer and the gravioli on here. But science isn't a huge issue, it's funds, right? And we don't really have any contract to do with this right now. They didn't want to give me a contract for the moon for some reason. I guess it's too close. Okay, separation and ignition. At least I don't have to worry about selling fuel down and limiting ignitions, though, practically speaking, all the launch engines are only going to be used on one ignition, but still, a little bit less stress than my usual realism overhaul stuff. Okay, looking good. We're about 1,400 meters per second away. Oh, we've lost communication. Well, that's a bit of a problem. I wonder what... wait. I wonder what uh, adds the additional ground stations to real solar system. I thought they would be here. Right? We have extra ground stations. I thought that would be part of real solar system. Not something to do with re realism overhaul. Thought they would be in the real solar system folder. There should be one at Bermuda, incidentally. Wait. No, but let's just warp to be. Yeah, Bermuda we should be tracking through. This is a bit of a problem. Of course, Mechjeb can override that and totally ignores the communication thing. But throttle probably does not. Yeah, my throttle's not working. Okay, hold on. We are going to want to test a few other things, so I'm going to temporarily disable the comm network, since that is not operating the way I thought, so that we can test the heat shield and all. So, yeah, it looks like we ended up in orbit with a thousand meters per second after all, so that was a good trajectory. But, yeah, I thought that we would have more ground stations. I'll have to take a look at a realism overhaul install to see what exactly adds those those to it since it doesn't seem to be RSS okay so we're just gonna proceed um, once we get far enough out that the horizon issue isn't gonna be a problem I'll probably activate the comm again so that we can test the commutron 16s and make sure they have adequate range Okay, well, we don't really need to do an off-plane transfer. We're pretty close to lined up. Let's do a quick transfer, normal transfer to the moon. Takes about three days. We don't want to overdo it, otherwise it's going to take extra to make orbit. <laughs> well, there's a free return sort of situation, but I don't need that. We do want to make orbit and then come back. Okay, well now we have to do a turnaround because actually um, well, we are trying to do something opposite the current node. And I can't just do the parameters using MechJab, can I? No, well, I mean, yeah, it should be pretty easy to figure this out. So I need to flip around. The moon is fairly big. It's rather forgiving as far as encounters are concerned. Okay, power. Well, this is gonna take a while. Okay, taking a look at this, I might have misjudged the Delta V. We have enough to make orbit around the moon, but not break orbit again. So, let me quickly replot this as a free return. <laughs> I, I joked that I didn't need a free return, but me, actually, maybe I do. Um, and that's what that is. We'll have to make an adjustment over at the moon side if we want to get a low over the moon sort of thing. This is still a straight up prograde burn. So we'll continue burning. Oh, I see what's going on. 
Uh, it thinks we're decoupling the heat shield. Ah, I see. Oh, well, we've got a bit of a problem then, don't we? Well, that would have been true. We would have been decoupling the heat shield first before making a burn with these engines if we were coming back from Mars. In which case, that was the Mars capture heat shield. Hmm. I really want to test the heat shield. So, I'm gonna toss this up pretty high, but not all the way to the moon, I guess. We'll get close to the moon's orbit, but not quite there. Okay, I think that's about as far as I go. So, a bit depressing. Our more than 300 ton rocket couldn't uh, launch, oh, a ton and a bit to the moon. So, we'll have to take that under advisement. We only got up to here, but actually, um, Delta V wise, we're not that far off from the moon, maybe a few hundred more meters per second high over the water so we can get by on the pen and stuff let's get some goo we'll recover attempt to recover that okay this should be the right orientation to bring that periapsis down and while with Kerbin I aim for 26 kilometers here I'll aim for about 70 ish maybe 65 okay that's fine 61 okay and I'll pre set it to surface negative relative velocity minimum pressure still 0.25 ish and i'll arm that okay let's see if it can survive this isn't the highest approach of course but uh it's gonna be something not sure about how earth looks i swear in the other versions i preferred the look there than what we've got here. I'm not quite buying this look. Other versions of RSS visual enhancements, I mean. The clouds look nice though. Okay, that's the atmosphere. 10,350 almost is what we're entering at. I guess I'll retract, retract the antennae. At this point, I don't have any commands to give it, really. And just for the heck of it, I'll restore communication. Nope, not like that. I mean, restore the communication limitation. And, well, of course, we don't have communication, so it's all on its own now. Okay, ablation rate's pretty high. But it doesn't look like we're going to use all of the ablator. That's good. Doesn't seem too bad, actually. Right here is orbital... Well, actually, a little bit more than orbital velocity. It's a low Earth orbit, I mean. So, yeah, maybe we could just pack about half of our blazer, And then we could reach the moon. Not make orbit, though, which is sort of a bummer. No big surprise that uh, Kerbalism didn't do anything to this. The flight was sh so short, only one day and 17 hours, let's say. So we will have to take a look at other transfer windows and really get out there. But not all the trans... I mean, maybe I should implement my little uh, Realism Overhaul Lite, which is just a single configuration file that sort of does what Smurf does. A lot of people use Smurf. Smurf. Oh, a Venus transit window is coming up close. That should be interesting. Vesta is a possibility. Vesta is a little bit hard to get to because of inclination. And then maybe Jupiter. But that's going to take a lot of Delta V. But if we just do a flyby, we'd have to use a pretty big rocket, though. I really need to get the contracts configured properly, obviously. That's going to be key. That's what RP0 and RP1 are mainly supposed to do, except for repricing the parts. Okay, 
pretty good velocity, 6 meters per second with the parachute. Wouldn't want to be any faster. And splash down. Okay, recover vessel. Okay, so this was just a quick test. I could spend some time just using stock parts without any modification to the tanks and see what I can do. We've got some money to throw around at that proposition, so we could see what I can do sending missions to Venus, Vesta, and Jupiter um, with just uh, stock parts without modifying the tank masses or the engine masses or anything like that. But maybe you guys want to just uh, see me proceed with uh, more adjusted install with uh, just a single configuration file to make things work a little bit better. Maybe increase antenna ranges as well. I'll leave that up to you guys. Um, so tell me what you think in the comments, uh, which you would prefer. And I can proceed like that. So this is just a quick testing episode to see the state of things in real solar system. But obviously, if we really want to figure out Kerbalism in real solar system, we need to send things out. So, and we need to send Kerbals up. Potentially, our existing rocket that I just sent the moon probe on could handle sending a Kerbal up, uh, at least to low Earth orbit, maybe to a higher orbit on a more challenging mission. And the big rocket, the one that costs 300,000, could put a station into orbit, a small hitchhiker can and a few other things. And that could handle about 16 tons to orbit, I think. So that's what we're looking at. Anyway, with those thoughts, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.